Today we're going to take a look at a couple things that you can do with an Excel. Um, hopefully you learn a couple tips, things you didn't know before. What we're going to do is we're going to look at a quote form and a price sheet, a very, very simple example that I've created. And I'm going to show you kind of how I put this thing together. One of the first things you're going to notice here is that um, I don't see like any grid lines. I mean, this looks very different than what you'll typically see in Excel. And if I want to like modify this, if I go double click, it's going to tell me that it's protected. Well, how do you protect things? A lot of people don't know that. The first thing I'm going to do is um, unlock this so you can kind of get a picture for how I've set up the sheet. And I can choose to unprotect the sheet itself. Uh, these are sheets or the entire book. I'm just going to go ahead and unprotect the sheet with my super secret password. And then I'm going to show you a couple things I've done here. First on the view, um, you'll see that um, I have grid lines if I want to see the grid lines or if I don't. Uh, do I want to see the headings, right, or the uh, the column and, uh, and the row uh, headings? And do I want to see the formula bar, which is where I will create formulas and the content of my form? All right, so for design, you know, I'm going to probably put those in here. One of the things you're going to notice here is I've got these... Um, I've got a couple cells here that are colored. Now this one here happens to be just colored. Like if I right click, go into format cells, you're going to see that the fill on this cell is red. Like I just made it red. If I go in here and look at the fill on that cell, you're going to see there's no fill. So why is it red? What I've done here is I've set up a conditional rule. This is called conditional formatting. I've done it on these fields as well. So if I come in here and I look at conditional formatting, I can go to manage rules. And what I've done is I've said is if this cell or any of the cells I've selected are blank, then I'm going to go ahead and edit the rule. So if, if that cell happens to be blank, it's going to make the fill red and highlight that. Okay. So that's just one way. There's ways you can do all kinds of different conditional formatting. These are things people really don't know how to do um, within here. So what happens if, is if it's not blank, if I pick a value, this one happens to be a drop-down value, it's going to change it from red. Voila. There we go. Now, where are these values coming from? You know, I've got a drop-down list. A lot of people don't know how to create a drop-down list. So these, if we go to data... Okay, we're thinking about the data behind this field or this cell is I'm doing data validation. Okay, if I click on data validation, this one happens to be a list type. So I'm validating that it is a value as part of a list. And then defining where does that list exist. And you can see that this is actually going to a different tab. This is going to my price sheet. Okay. And so these are the values that I'm using within that list. Just click Escape, go back over here. So that is where that's coming from. Now over here, I've got Sold By. This is also a validated list. But where do these values come from? So let's go to, let's see here, and pick a Referral. All right, now I've got my required fields. But where again does that value come from? Let's go back to my data validation. And it's going to my hidden tab in a particular cell. Now where's my hidden tab? Because a lot of people don't know how to do this either. If I come down here to the bottom, I can see hide and unhide. Well, right now they're grayed out because they're locked. I've locked the structure of the workbook. If I go back to my review here, and where I had protect sheet, I also have protect workbook. I'm going to enter my password here. And now when I come down and right click, I can unhide my hidden worksheet. And I could have named this anything, right? I just chose to call it hidden. You could name it values or whatever you want to call it, I guess. So I have, again, some values in this um, worksheet. I like to do this, a lot of people do, where you'll keep your values that you're using um, within drop-downs or ranges or really anything, any calculations. Um, you'll put them on a separate worksheet within the workbook and then be able to hide those. Okay, so that's what I've done here. 
Now we have kind of everything unlocked. Let's go ahead and start entering some information. And I want to show you a couple of things that I've done here. I mean, these are all pretty simple things, but some people maybe don't know this. Um, you can see here I've got, what, five different cells, six cells. Um, what I've done here is these are all one cell. And what I've done here, if I go back to the home, I, the right here on the front is your merge and center. Now, if I don't do that, then these are all separate cells. Okay. Merge and center. Of course, now it's centered. I may not want it centered, so I'm just going to go ahead and make it left aligned. So I'm going to sell us to Bob Smith. Bob's at uh, 521 Fifth Avenue. All right, and of course I don't want those aligned like that, so we'll go ahead and do that. Now, Wonder Widgets here. This is a very simple example of a, of a quote form. Um, you can see that I did uh, merge these cells together, and I just put in a, a product name. Of course, I could pull that in from you know a value somewhere else, maybe on my price sheet. Uh, this price has a formula in it, so it's saying if the value in E5 on this worksheet, and E5 is where I'm picking my addition, is equal to the value in A4 on the tab or worksheet, price sheet A4. So if basic equals basic, that formula then is going to pick the value In the price sheet for B4. Okay, let's look at that. So the price in B4, let's go back to my view, show my headings. B4 is $50. Okay, but then I have an, the way these formulas work is I have an if this, then that, otherwise, then a value. What I've done here is I've inserted another if statement. So if it's not basic addition, right, if they don't match up basic to basic, then I'm going to go on and I'm going to say, but if the value here is the same as the value in standard, right, in A5, in A5 which that's what it is here, then I'm going to go to the value of B5. So I'm putting in the value for standard edition. However, if it's not the same. Oh, let's go ahead and. So if um, this addition happens to be enterprise or professional, sorry, if it's professional, then I'm going to want the value of 100. And if it doesn't happen to be any of those, then I've put in two quotes, you can see right here, which basically puts in um, a blank value. Because otherwise, if it happens to be something else, it's going to give me a zero. I don't want to display anything. So what will happen is if you look down here, basic, standard, my price changed. Professional, my price changed. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do, um, I like to highlight fields in a price sheet or a quote form with a color that are editable, uh, meaning that there's input uh, that the user can um, manipulate. So I could go in here and put in, you know, a quantity of 12, right? Or maybe I want to set a, a high-end value on that. Um, I can go back to my data validation. I can see that it is a whole number between 1 and 20. So I can actually validate things. So maybe I come in here and I want to do 21. Nope, not valid. I can do other things with this as well. I can actually put an input message. Error alert. And we can make 
this a stop or a warning. Go ahead and do that. So now, right here's my input value, right? It's giving me that little uh, suggestion here, input value between 1 and 20. But if I happen to not see that, if I'm blind, must be a whole number between 1 and 20. Continue, yes. I'm actually, this is a warning. I could make it a complete stop. So just a couple things here. Let's go back to 1. The other thing you're going to see here is that I have this margin in here of 10%. Well, where did I get this? Well, it's the same kind of a deal that I had over here with the price. Um, I'm picking the margin from the hidden tab, right? So it's a kind of the same formula that I've got going on over here. And over here, I've got a formula I've put together uh, to calculate the price. And what the price is doing is it's multiplying the price times the quantity times the margin. Okay, well, actually it's not multiplying times the margin, it's multiplying times the value in F16. Well, where is F16? I see E and I see G. Go unhide. I have a hidden column in here, and that's my margin. Okay, so what I've done here is I'm taking 100 times this times the value in this hidden column is actually the price that I want to calculate. I don't want to calculate something I'm displaying to them, which is their margin. Um, I like to, it's a personal preference, but I like to highlight any of my hidden values in like a different color or something like red, um, just so I know that these are things that once I'm done with them, I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, rehide them. Okay. So again, just kind of putting it all together here, change the value distributor, 30% margin, $100 price, I'm making 70 bucks. Now let's take this and uh, put it back in order. I'm going to go back to my view, hide everything, go back over here, view, we're going to hide everything here too. Go back over here, rehide this, make sure that looks good, and that does come back over here. Um, one other thing I did not show you is that you can set the print value. Uh, if I go back to page layout, uh, the set the print area so that way if they go to print this page they won't actually see this. Or if I wanted to, I could even hide that if I wanted, but I do want that notification on the screen. And then what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and resave this. So I'm going to protect the sheet. Enter your password twice. Make sure it's valid. I'm going to protect this. Actually, this one is protected. I'm going to go ahead and protect the workbook. And that way, nobody can change things, right? There's one more thing that I did not show you, and I should have done that. And that is protection. So this field, actually I can do this with just highlighting an area or highlighting the whole thing. If I right click and I go into my cells, there's a thing called protection. I can lock them, I can hide the values in them. Okay, I'm going to probably do that on the majority of the, um, the cells that I have in a quote form, but then the ones that I want to allow them to manipulate or enter information into. I can simply hold down the control button and select them, right click on one of them, go into format cell, and I can unlock it. That way when I do my protection, let's go ahead and protect that workbook. Now, when I go to click on something that I'm not allowed to, it's going to tell me it's protected. But if I go to click on something else, it's going to allow me to do that. So just a couple tips there. Hopefully this helps. And uh, come back next week, and we will have some more tips for you with Microsoft Excel.